You go to the toilet and you don't sit down. You, you go backwards. It, you turn it and then, so you're in the bowl and then you're just there. And then that way it's straight into the bowl. You don't need to get a towel involved and then you're done. What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Jeff Thurm. And I'm Roman Kemp. And this is Celebrity with BuzzFeed UK. Roman, here in Celebrity, we like to have some tea with our guests yes. while we spill the tea on your career. I don't drink tea. What? Uh, tea for me has always been the one part of being British that I can't get on board with. Why? Well, that, and I'm about to really annoy a lot of people, Sunday roasts. Wow. I think it's all hot drinks. Ah, I can give you a hot drink that I do like. Okay. Technically, it's soup, Bovril. Bovril. It's like a, it's like a soup. It's, it's actually a meaty drink. Well, sadly, Celebre Bovril doesn't really work no. as a name of a show. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, so we are stuck with tea today. First person to give me a cup of tea was Mary Berry. I was quite nervous because she said, because she had built this up. I'll make it perfect. Like, it will be perfect. And then finally, she's made me this cup of tea and I've drank it. Oh, I still hate it. Imagine hating Mary Berry's tea. And it tasted like brown, dirty water. She said, do you like it? And I didn't have the heart to lie to her. So I said, no, I'm really sorry. And she goes, well, what would you prefer? I just said a pint. So then we just had a pint. Cheers. What does this bring to your life? It brings a lovely conversation. Obviously you work for a station that plays music, which must be nice. But at the same time, there's gotta be songs that you have to play because they're number one, that you're yeah. just sick of. Yes, there is a certain amount of times I can listen to the Jonas Brothers Waffle House. <laughs> I of course even, there is, yeah. of course there is. But at the same time, that's the beauty of it, is that it's not about what I want. It's a collective. Mm. You know, when you go to a party and I say to you, do the playlist for a party, yeah. you're not thinking, this is all I want to play. That's it. You know, yeah. you, you've got to think of everyone. Sorry, Nick, Joe, Kev, <laughs> I love you and you know I love you. But when you make a brilliant song like that, it can get played a lot. Can I tell you, right? Artists, when they come in and we talk about the song to them, they go, oh, no. Yeah. Really. They go, oh, play a different one. Yeah, like, do you think Carly Rae Jepsen still likes playing Call Me Maybe on tour? No. Probably not. Do I love hearing it every time I see her live? Yeah. Yes, I, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I was in charge of our Pride playlist a few years ago when we were in London Pride. I felt so famous that everyone around me was dancing to the songs I chose. Like Little Mix <laughs> Touch came on and I, I was Little Mix in that moment because I was like, they like my <laughs> song. So it's a good feeling when you get the song right and know people are loving it. Have there been any celebrities that you are dying to interview that have not ever been into the station? Drake. Drake. He only does the things that he wants to, and it really upsets me that you won't do my show. Has there been anyone that's been in that has just been an absolute nightmare of an interview that you wish never happened? I won't tell you who I've really not enjoyed, mm. but I will tell you that I'm currently banned from interviewing Daniel Craig. <laughs> Daniel, you're fine with me. <laughs> sip or spill. We are going to read you some headlines involving you. If you want to spill on them, go for it. If you want to move on to the next one and don't want to talk about it, have a little sip. God. All right. All right. First one. Roman Kemp sparks debate asking fans how many times they reuse their bath towel. I was shocked by some of the answers. I saw some people said two or three days. Is that bad for you? I, I, mine's way longer. Oh, yeah. thank God. I thought I'm like maybe pushing two, three weeks. Yeah. Maybe more No, that's what I'm saying. Good. There's a couple of things that people don't like to admit to. One is weeing in the shower, and two is how much they, they rewash their, their towel. I'm also, sheets and pillows. Changing a fitted sheet, I think, is the hardest part of it, being an adult. Yeah, I know what you mean. But genuinely. Roman Kemp taught Dad Martin everything he knows about manscaping. <laughs> you guys are way too close. I look at my dad as a prototype for me, mm. because I'm like, okay, you're old my body will morph somehow, yeah. might not be as good looking. I've asked him like, at what point did your pubes go gray? You know, are they fully white? Is it Father Christmas down there? Or is it a mix match? He said it's a mix match. Okay. So that's good to know. Yeah. The other one was, you know, how often is he shaving? And he says quite a lot, right? Which is weird, but it's also because he goes commando. My dad mm. grew up never wearing pants. So the trick of, how do you, do you mind me asking that question? Um, I do, I know, I read, you do it backwards on, on the toilet. Yeah, do you do that? Shower. No, man, you yeah. can't do that. I've got clogs in the thing. Nah. What you do is you, so you go the to toilet. the toilet. Yeah. You go to the toilet and you don't sit down. You, you turn backwards. it, you turn it, 
and then so you're in the bowl and then you're just there. Yeah. And then no. that way it's straight into the bowl. You don't need to get a towel involved because you're not rewashing your towels. <laughs> and then and then you're done. Roman Kemp had sex in his famous dad Martin's bed. What's wrong with that? And my favorite part about the headline is that he then said that he had sex in yours as well. Oh. We have a sip. Ariana Grande absolutely pies off Roman Kemp on Tinder. You two are, it's, it's a video clip. It's you two, she's in your studio. You're showing her your Tinder. You ask like, would you swipe right on me? And she goes, I don't know, I don't have Tinder. This is really awkward. That's all it is. But this headline makes it seem like I, you're swiping on well, Tinder I and she full on said no. Well, I, I get nervous sometimes about the, those types of things because I don't know, don't know what it is. You're also a really big advocate for, for mental health. Yeah. I'm so curious. How do you maintain your mental health while you know, kind of being in public eye? Um, I don't go to a lot of parties. I separate. I try to separate as much as possible my work and my personal life. Yeah. My fun side is never mixed with you know the people that I work with, which yeah. it sounds weird, but but that's just how I run my life. Like I've got my mates, and my mates are from the, the same mates that I've had since the age of six. Those are the people that I hang out with at the weekend, and I think what that does is it just brings you back into reality a little bit because it's really hard you know when with our industry yeah. you know you, you're in a world that is fabricated or there is something that you know someone wants from you and that can really play in your head someone in my position who's both parents are famous yep. a godfather who is insanely famous yep. and you see fame at different levels the level that the uh, my mum's at is different to the level that my dad's at and then the difference that George Michael is at, which is up here, I know that up here, that doesn't necessarily bring happiness. Right. And sometimes having that in your head and understanding what your real goals are really help with your mental aspect. Mm. You know, it, it, I know what I want to achieve in my life. Uh, you know, I have a nice family, you know, being able to, to go to a job and walk away and someone say, oh, he's a nice guy. Yeah. Uh, that for me is a really, really nice thing. Make a good mark on the world. Have good people that sur like surrounding you. 100%. And just be true to yourself, I think is really important. Yeah, man. Um, I love that. And I also love your message of, are you really okay? One of the main reasons I love that as, again, as an American, yeah. that question, you okay? I never knew what the right answer to you okay was. Yeah, yeah, are yeah. Are you really okay? I think really pushes on that, like British stereotype of are you okay? Make that be the most important question because it, it should be, right? Yeah. Like sometimes it takes to say it twice, but for some reason that second okay, when it hits you, you're much more susceptible to actually telling the truth. Yeah. But I will say choose three people in your phone book that you think are doing great in mm -hmm. life. Try that technique on them. If by the end of that, you haven't found out anything new, I'll buy you a drink. I'm yet to buy one person a drink. And moving on to what's next for you. Yeah. You have two new shows coming out. So I'm curious, going from presenting radio to presenting TV, how's that difference been? A show like Boot Dreams, I'm following a group of lads who are together in a, in a football academy and all of these lads have been let go. You know, there's scenes in there where you actually watch a footballer in a therapy session. Mm. That one's relatively kind of easy for me to walk into because I'm just having conversations yeah, with yeah. real people. And I feel like that seeing men in therapy obviously then ties back to other messages. And oh, are man. really okay and everything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really powerful, yeah. really, really powerful yes. stuff. It's a, it's a show that, yes, it is football, but it's, it's, it's far bigger than that. The, on the other side, you've got a show like The Finish Line. It's fast paced, it's really fun, uh, and it's like proper shiny floor TV. Yeah. You know, I, I went into it thinking, Billy Big Bollocks, I've got this. I left there, honest to God, we filmed like the first two episodes. I've never been more down about my own ability. Oh, I thought I could do this and I cannot. Yeah, what yeah, am yeah. I doing? Yeah, exactly. But, but, my, you know, I called my mum and my dad. And uh, my mum and dad were both just like, they were like, Look, go to bed now. Mm. Because the sooner this day is over, tomorrow's there. And they were right, you know, sometimes it is just as simple as just allow the day to end. Yeah. We got there in the end. Nice. And actually, I'm not that bad. We'll be the judges of that. Yep, yeah. no, please do. <laughs> please do. Our last segment today is TBT. Yeah. So we have a bunch of throwback pictures. Yeah. And I would like for you to explain them to us, please. Oh my God. This was when I actually got myself into shape and I thought, why not show it off? Yeah, looking great. Then this, this was one of my proudest moments. 
I was Alice in Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, you were just like her. That's a primary school show. Wow. I'll have you know, I did the whole of Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland and I nailed it. My mum always used to get really upset seeing this picture because you would have made a really pretty girl. You're also in drag quite a lot on your Instagram. I really enjoy it. We, we did this, this was Bimini Bomboulash did this for me. We love Bimini. Tucking was interesting. You, had, you did the whole thing. Yeah, I wanted to. I, I, I've promised at some point I will do a show, a five minute show at Heaven. We need that. This is me at 13 having, with my parents' acceptance, a pimps and hoes party. <laughs> no. I actually have a G unit spinny belt. Based on our conversation today, I'm actually surprised you went as the pimp and not the hoe. Me too. Yeah. Um, these are from 2014. The good old days of the Valencia filter. Yeah, man. These photos for me, these are the start of my career as a presenter. I think this is one of my first ever shows on, mm. on Capital. And I think I was, I was clearly doing like overnights. And this was from, I was a cameraman at one point. And then one time I said, well, I've got a show that I can make for you. It's called Man Versus Football. It was rubbish. It was rubbish. No one watched it. But it was me running around London trying to watch every single World Cup game in 2014 um, in a different nationalities bar. Um, so and then it was just literally like running around. And, and But from this kind of time of my life, Capital saw that. Mm. And, and so this wouldn't, this wouldn't happen without this. Mm. So the grind of falling asleep at, at 2 a.m. on a train back, having done a show that you know is failing, um, sometimes can pay off. This Roman now has a show on the BBC about football. Yeah. What would today's Roman tell this day's Roman? Like, keep having fun. Don't worry about how many people are watching your things. Are you having fun? And you know, are you doing the things that you enjoy? Because that's the most important thing. I love that. And on that, we will, we will leave it. So yeah, thanks so much for opening up and discussing with us today. No worries. I, I appreciate your dirty water, sir. I've been told that before, you know. A lot of people like my dirty water. That's a different show. <laughs> Thanks so much.